at uh, two minutes to 11. Get back on our agenda here. We have Mr. Knowles. All right, before us. Welcome, David. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, today's more of a, a tiny up loose ends kind of deal, and I'm here to talk about the IGA agreements that we have with our sister county and Lane County hubs, just with our IT stuff mapping and our web page side. So basically, we're talking about three separate IGAs. And so it's best in my world to work on one at a time. Okay. So the PAT system is our internet face that we have, and it has our mapping and our tax information, and it takes stuff out of our existing system and puts it on the web for uh, the public to see. It's a very, very useful tool. It's the only IGA we have, well, it's one of the two IGAs we have going forward, uh, and it's going to continue. And with our software content change, it will also amend the new system and go on. So the PAT system was originally developed by Deschutes County, who's on Helion, and that's where we're going. So that's, they modified it for Times and Warriors, and now we're going to modify it back to Helion. And they monitor it. <coughs> It's live information, so every time anything is, is recorded, the very next day it's, in, it's out for public information. And that's, we're probably ahead of about a third of that 50% of the other counties with that type of service on the internet. And that <clears throat> went up from $6,000 to $6,180, had a slight increase. So I would like to uh, recommend that that be acted on. The next one that we have going on is, is our mapping, our GIS. And what that, what that means is when there is a lot line adjustment, a consolidation, any kind of a, a property line change, it has to be recorded in or map. We used to have the Department of Revenue do did our mapping for the county. Um, they got very slow and they were behind between four to six months on their mapping work. And Lane County, uh, Phil Israel uh, decided to change to Lane County to do it. And they're out about two to three weeks um, from the time we request a map and change to us on the ORMAP map. And um, that will continue on with our new system also and on. And so I recommend that you folks agree with that. Uh, they charge us by an hourly rate. and. Uh, and the hourly rate went up about five bucks an hour this last year. Um, but uh, we just use them as needed. There's been some discussion about the county having a GIS person. If that was to occur, this this contract would be ending. And uh, last year we typically spend thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars on mapping. So Dave, just for for that purpose, because you know, sometimes when this is presented to us, not this, but this notion of the GIS, which I would love to see us have someone, sometimes people use the budgeted amount, not the actual. Right. And so that actual is what needs to come into play right. for our and exposure. Yes. So we've had a, an individual who said that the assessor's office will throw $20,000 in the hat. Well, we don't spend $20,000. Yeah. And so that's a more realistic number. Is. Well, well, and Dave, just to have a little more discussion without all parties here, but go ahead and have the discussion. Whenever it was presented to me, I, I said I'm not interested until all parties affected are able to sit down and come to right. a, a consensus of what would work best for the county. Mm -hmm. And so um, you've had that discussion, and in the future we may see that coming forward, but all parties will be involved. Uh, correct. At my time, I don't feel we're ready for it, and I don't feel that we have the things in place we need to have to do it to make it make sense. And we've had some folks wanted to do an interim thing where we get a part-time person that's out of county. Uh, it's up to dealing with an individual, and I said I just assume not go that direction at this time. Um, and, and we have to hire all contract rules and, yeah. and employee rules and everything. Right. I don't want to make I don't want to get a band-aid to get to where we need to get. We need to stay with where we're at, in my opinion until we completely come up with a good plan that makes sense countywide so all the other departments can utilize the GIS mapping because there's a lot to be done from the law enforcement, the roads, and everybody else. 
So I'll be at my cabin. You can send me a text when you guys actually do this sometime in the future. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> But anyway, that's, that's where we're at with that. Well, so it's not appropriate to get too far in the weeds without the other players involved. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, everybody's got to be involved in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, somebody came and stomped on my door and wanted me to do something immediately for this last budget session, and I just took my heels and I said, no, I don't like to make hasty decisions, which usually leads to a bad decision. Yeah. Yep, thank you. So, um, and the last one is IGA for our Thompson Reuters software. And we're running the system until the end of the year, December 31st. And that is going to be, I think it's 12,000 of change. And that will be ending at the end of the year. And they go big year to mid year, so that's why it's an odd amount. So I've already, Thompson Raiders have been alerted to when we're, when we're quitting. And I've signed the paperwork to, to end that. Uh, and also with Wayne County. And, uh, so next year, we'll see our uh, support for our IT drop about thirty thousand dollars annually. So for uh, all the numbers that in here in your proposed budget, mm -hmm. the approved budget, yes, and but not adopted yet. Um, so for tomorrow, we have to do three different. Although it's all with Lane County, three different motions. There, are, there are three individual separate ones, and they should not be married together. Right now. They're dealing with three separate topics. Yep. And you see, in about a year or so, we have about thirty thousand dollars and rock. And so basically, just in a nutshell, we give Thompson Reuters thirty thousand dollars for licensing and the privilege to use their their product. Then we give them another thirty thousand dollars for support. Then when the support has been so pathetic that. When Phil Israel was here, we, we, we brought on Lane County to help us with our taxes, and that was another $30,000. And so, three times three is 90, and the new system is $30,000 for licensing and system, and $30,000 for support, 60 total. The reason I thought that that could be money that we could strategize for GIS. You know what, I'm not into spending money because it's in the budget. Um, so it's, it just needs to be a savings at this point until something else comes along and makes sense. Um, that's, that's my take on the thing. Um, and, and again, that's two separate items. Uh, and there's a lot of logistics involved with that because working with the county surveyor and Karen's position and, and the logistically where would they be and there's just a lot of things that need to be dealt with and so I recommend we table that until well, well I agree we need to uh, address GIS at some time it's been on the table for a long time but nothing to privatized it has and, and I'm unlike everyone else in this building we would like to see an in-house GIS we'd like to create another position in Lakeview not in Lane County or not in Salem or anywhere else, it will help our economy, it will help us use it, and it will snowball and it will be, be a great full-time position. And, and Dave, we have to be sure and bring all the players in. I believe that is to be a great tool for our road department. Oh, and, and, and I, I believe that they have to be brought to the table, and, and that can be a financial component along with the right player right. component. And so, um, where you're in transition on a whole different software and all this stuff. This was not done here. I, I, I just assume not have to deal with it anymore this time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and we haven't pulled all the absolute players together. Um, so, and I'm not no GIS expert. I'm not even close, but I know the need and, and it will help so many different departments. But thank you for, for exact, exactly what you just said. It needs to be done right because of it, and it has to be sustainable and for the right reasons. If, if it's one year of intense work and then it slows down to half the time, we have to look at that with a vision. Right. If that's not the case, if it's going to stay 100% full time, we have to do that and, and make sure that, it, that we do it. The reason I brought up 30,000 for just in jest to get the discussion going. Yeah. We need to work on the GIs. Well, it, and, it, and I totally agree, and I'm, I'm probably a strong GIs guy. What we've done in our office, as far as uh, arming our appraisers with GIS out in the field, is amazing, yes. and it's very helpful for us. And our, it is 
eliminated errors on the wrong properties and it speeds us from property to property. And so I'm proactive on that. But it just, that's a big commitment with the salary and the overhead and the, the benefit package and then what's a, what's a computer going to look like and, and the other licensing and, and so on. It's a big animal. And um, but we have to start some time to digest it. We do. And, but it's just like talking to the road department, the way their funding stream is right now and the way they've been having their GIS work done but the other sources have not been very painful for them. So they're not very excited about jumping in, you know, and they don't have a lot of money to bring. And um, the planning department doesn't have a lot of money to bring. And and I and the truth be known, I don't spend that much money on because I yeah. I only yeah. submit what's finished. I don't Three items for tomorrow. Three items for tomorrow. Do I need to be present for that? Uh, I, you answered my question for that it is all in the current budget, all the numbers. So I put the current budget in. Uh, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Well, I'll be down the hall. I got, I'm on full court press right now with some other things. Yep. Yeah. Go for it. Right. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, trying to get through this, we got BFW flag donation. Um, so they're asking for uh, $25 per year will enable us to set up flags to be honored in the location of your choosing. Um, is that the gist of this being brought forward? Is for it's been given $25 a year. So now I can, before we do that, I mean, I'm totally supportive of it, but mm -hmm. somewhere in here, and I don't remember because last week it was just kind of a fog, something about you being in charge of flags here at the county? I that, still have no idea what he was talking about. Okay. Who was he? I don't know. Some man from the VFW said I was in charge of the flag rotation, and the county does that, and said, I don't think so. No. So. Uh, I directed it to speak with the VFW. Um, no, the uh, County Veterans Service Officer back in olden days used to acquire flags for the cemetery, and that's that kind of money off for the uh, VFW to hang out. We'll talk about that later. But as far as did the person talk to you had a big beer? No. But I think the point is, is no one is not in charge of the flags. No. No, I, I just wanted to bring to your Unless attention. Unless you want to. No, thank you. Um, that um, they'd like a $25 donation from the county. This would be yearly to replace flags. Both the flags will be put on the, well, the flag, and there will be four possibly on each corner. Yeah. On specific flag base. Is that $25 per flag or 24 times 4? Just total. Okay. That hates you this work, but for me, this one's a no brainer. It's yeah. pretty simple. And I appreciate that it comes before the board first, but um, mm -hmm. I don't, I think by consensus today we can get that one done and over with. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, fine. That's something we've been doing for years. Yeah. 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 Concur. Concur. All right, make that happen, Melanie. Okay. Um. And then I have another request for $165 from the Christmas Valley Chamber of Commerce. I have not approved this yet, but she says we always approve it. Um, so I don't know if we want to spend this money. Um, Well, Melanie, let's let's take this a step further. You came to me last Thursday, I think, with this bill in hand that you received, right? And asked what to do with it. And I asked you to contact them, and they said it had already been approved. And I said, no, this goes before the board, right. regardless of right. of uh, the fact that we've done it for the last few years for advertising. And so that's why it's here today, is because I asked Melanie to put it on the agenda for actual approval. So um, I have not seen this until it got handed to me or had any discussion on it until then, but um, 
if, if we give the consensus to pay this today, I think it needs, uh, Melanie, you would need to let them know that um, we're very supportive of many things, from chambers to chambers to others, but it's no different than <coughs> progress addition or anything. It, you, um, they have to make sure before they just put it in there that you work with the Board of Commissioners, so basically you you will tell them, this doesn't happen again. We, you, I you, explained that to her, uh, that we do have a process. Uh, so okay. I don't intend that this will happen again. Okay. Well, I wish so. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, honestly, I was a little upset that I got a bill for $165 at this time of the year that I had never agreed to because I control this budget and I take pride in my budgets and make sure everything's right on course and for her to spring this on me and said that oh one of you one of the, your bosses said it would be okay. I said, Well I got that because because I had the sheet and you didn't ask me, I didn't present it to any of you. So I just I explained to her how we do things because she I, she maybe she's new too. But I said I've got to follow my rules and procedures. What was that about phone or in person? On the phone, she's in Christmas Valley. Yeah. I didn't actually go there. So um, I'll give the nod to go ahead and pay up with that, that make sure that they understand before things yeah. put in because of it, it goes with we use um, there could be other things that we may be not aware of that just happen. I mean, anywhere from notices to whatever, but mm -hmm. um, they need to approve that. Yeah. We, we, I, I guess where I'm going with this is we've been very gracious as a board for a few years now, making donations to both the chamber up here, just called Lake County Chamber, and the North Lake Chamber through our economic development that gave funds every year. Exactly. And so, well, and I don't get, once again, I'll say, say and I appreciate Melanie coming and seeing it, but I, was, I think I was the only one in the office at that moment. But coming and asking me, and I don't appreciate her getting put in that position to get a bill that says just pay it. Well, I, I, I got to say one more thing. Oh, yeah. What was my word that I always, my saying I always say? Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Being she sure. does. We win. I appreciate that, Melanie. Thank you. Bye. So, Thank you, Melanie, for, for that. So, for the audience, this is actually for a county ad in their tourist guide. I'm not sure. Uh, that's what it says. Um, she didn't elaborate a whole lot. Um, I wanted to see if this is some, I think it's probably a good program to support, but I just wanted to confirm with you guys before I go ahead and say, sure, we'll do this. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's for the tourist edition. That's an addition to their. Um, right. Yes. I mean, like a picture of Lake County Commissioners or what it is. The I, I'm not sure if it was that or if it was. Well, Melanie, maybe we ought to have Commissioner Kessner follow up because they said you approved it, Commissioner. So I did not approve it. Well, I'm not saying you did. I'm saying but you're the they, on, they told you, they told Melanie that you approved it. So if you did approve it, I don't hopefully you knew what it was. They, did they tell you that I approved it? Yeah, but. I don't, I think you would have told me if you did. Yeah. I just wanted to get this housekeeping thing well, nipped up. Um, came on, he, he doesn't name himself as the latest on the road, but before that. No, I didn't. Uh, yes, you did. But when Tilly came in for their progress edition, she brought me options, what we want to do, what kind of picture, and I, I asked you guys what you felt best about. And, um, so I'm, I'm assuming she'll have options for me. Anything. I think I know the person you talked to, probably in Eastern TC. Is that okay. Okay. So, um, uh, concurrence to pay the bill with uh, what I said for you, and you sound like you've already had that discussion with me. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, um, just a recap for tomorrow. We uh, the flag donation, we can delete that. We concurred on that today. Um, we have the Lane County IGA, the mediator, and MOU. Um, 
we need to add, uh, and we have the enterprise zone resolution, we need to add delegation of duties for an action item for it to be in the minutes, and we have uh, NASA, am I missing anything for tomorrow? Well, the, the, the delegation also includes the possible motion for signature with the banks, and then potentially the building department possible discussion decision. Oh, building department, yes, I asked them. Thank you, building department, be uh, an addition for tomorrow. And that gives opportunity if they don't get some things together, then we just don't have okay. it. So, um, let me see, if there was a second page here, am I missing? Um, I think we've got it all, uh, please, on updates. Anybody? And we're continuing this meeting until the afternoon at 3.30 also. Whenever yeah. We will be meeting with the Planning Commission, the Board of Commissioners, and legal counsel be on the phone. So, um, that's a very important time, 3.30. I will be, uh, hopefully we'll be done way before then, but I will be stepping out at 3, uh, 4.30. Um, if we're not done, if it's, um, I may go stretch out a few minutes, but I would think an hour with the legal come from the phone that it's just it's it's procedural procedural processes yeah. with all of us. Yeah. So, any leaves on the page? I don't know. Thank you. Uh, I attended the uh, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife public meeting on Edmonds Wells in Summer Lake last night. And one of both of you asked for people to give you comments on their yes and no's on it. That's what those are. It was mostly just informational. The whole subject matter if it continues to proceed, they'll go to the uh, Department of Fish, well, the Commission on Fish and Wildlife in October, of which I think one of several of us should attend at that time. But the uh, pros and cons, there's a lot of people for it and against it in that community, but there was only the other people who showed up. I mean, there's probably about at least 30. Oh, there was? Well, that's, that's, that's pretty, 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 pretty good turnout percentage. for summer late. Yeah. Well, um, and I'll speak for myself, and I haven't seen an, an email, I believe, Commissioner Shown, the same as, and, and the same as I, and I, I had an out-of-town engagement with family yesterday, but I uh, couldn't make the meeting, but um, I've said that if the community supports it, I don't have no objection. If the community doesn't support it as, as a whole, um, I, I will support what the community needs and predicts there. So as all of us have been lobbied both ways by different letters, different visits, different phone calls. Um, it really is uh, uh, impactful to a very small rural community like Summer yeah. Lake. So they, they know more about how they fit for their community than the board of commissioners. So that's where it being in the community. Well, I've been in the same spot. I think Chalen probably mentioned that. He called me this morning. We talked yesterday afternoon. We're going to talk again at three, but it's you know driving our lane uh, as far as the process and procedure that the state commission will decide on this. We can write a letter either in support or non-support. That's why they did this. I think there'll be more uh, people weigh in that weren't in attendance at the meeting that Chaylin and uh, uh, Morris Perry will be providing. Uh, I told him, he asked me this morning, I will count up this to see how they weighed in for or against or yes or no. Uh, so I, I will hear what the tally comes up. I don't know yeah, I think I might ask the, Melanie the to tally him. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I was driving back last night, I was going through while I was driving, I did not text while I drive. But uh, I was going through the, when I was for or against, I was talking one out the other window, one out the other, so it's kind of screwed. Okay, so with that, we will. Oh, I'm sorry. Starting, so there was Scuttlebutt going about town uh, on not fully comprehending why the county's going with the landfill. 
Uh, there's scuttlebutt out there of the county imposing new taxes, which I have no other debt on. I'd like to, in some fashion, be able to address the uh, public concerns. I think we have an obligation for that, for clarity, not to change our position. But if there's people who have exceptions out there, we need somebody to clarify, either in a special session or on public, or just one-on-one -on -one with uh, uh, a handful of folks and Kevin and the commissioner. I, uh, I tell you where I've been on that because I received the phone call from Gary McLeese and he is very upset and I'm requesting, and he used your name, is that you told him this spe spe special session and I told him, I said, we have a meeting on Tuesday, so I'd recommend we get on the work session. He demanded a special session, I said, no, Gary. He also wanted to know about the budget and everything, I said, Gary, we're doing our budget and it's at 8.45, he did not attend. Since then, he has also called again, uh, left a message. Where I'm at individually is, I said, I left a message to him, we have not pretty connected. I said, talk to our landfill manager first. Mm -hmm. And that is where that you can get 99% of your answers and stifle these rumors. Because of, there was rumors that were, I couldn't believe the rumors. I told him, I said, we made a unanimous decision here to take over the operations of this for the efficiencies and staying in compliance within uh, the state, and they'll keep the landfill here for 60 years. Yeah, and um, so I'm hopeful that he has, uh, he's the only one that's contacted me. Well, he, there's been some other people ask, but there hasn't been nobody that's been quite as demanding. And so I, I haven't heard back from him, but I believe that his questions, the same as another operator in our community, got his questions answered by meeting with our manager of that plant plant. Gary did call Kevin, and it, you know, it, I don't know if it's about <laughs> all those issues or not, because Kevin explained to him again. We've had four different meetings since earlier, the late winter, early spring, on this. They've been advertised meetings, and Jimmy did a great job of writing up an article describing the fact that we're not raising rates and, and what this was all about. And, uh, you know, I told Kevin, you know, just be as available as you can be. Uh, answer the questions that you get asked, and that's it. He, yeah. I, I, if someone wants to have a special session and, and talk to that, whatever the group size is, they're... They have my blessing. I'm not going to attend any more meetings related to that. So, yeah, my thoughts. Gary was saying this. I've been hearing on the streets my facts, and they called me for an hour and thirty minutes the other day on a long time. If there's a lot of folks out there, because people, are, it can be on the agenda, but most people don't see the agenda as such. If there's misinformation out there, we need to be solid in some fashion. That's my chest. It can be one-on-one uh, -on -one with Kevin, by 30 people individually, or it can be Kevin, one-on-one -on -one with 30 people in one meeting. I think it would be good to get the one person, if it's one person, that's sharing the misinformation and suggest maybe they stop doing it. Or educate them. Yeah, well, that's... Yeah, you're, you're the liaison to the contract, if you wish. <laughs> well, I... I... You know, the, my reasoning for guiding Gary towards the work session, because that's our norm, and there's plenty of time actually, probably faster than a special session could have happened, but the tone was very much about a headhunting expedition, then a special session, there should be some factual things come forward to be able to, to work towards the a resolution if there's a problem. And I don't see a problem. I see a huge benefit of all the work that most of us have done on the landfill and uh, being able to, for our citizens, being able to uh, keep the use here, not shipping it out, and keep the price down. 
but that was my reasoning for, I, I'm not opposed to special sessions whenever they're warranted, but the tone was not, didn't seem like it was what I wanted to put our department head or us in that situation until there was time one-on-one -on -one spent with our department head, and I do that any department, I recommend the same thing, talk to the department head that reports back to the board of commissioners. That's where I said, yeah. Uh, I think we're all on the same page of assuming the uh, landfill is just uh, getting the full information out to the public. I think something. the press done an awesome job. Yeah, yeah. here again, I mean, Jimmy can. Good job, Jimmy. Thank you. So, with that, unless you guys have something else. Yeah. Uh, uh, one other thing on the Air Brown sprinkler system, is that resolved? It, it's, it's resolved as far as we're in compliance and there, we do not have to, um, well, it's not resolved. It, we're able to continue somewhat for eternity with a plan. Yeah. Um, so that part, but it hasn't been fully addressed because if you have the grandstands, but you also have two bathrooms, you have storage area slash used for a fair time when yeah. people occupying it. So I'm working with the, the building official, the department uh, manager, Ronnie. Uh, she's been in contact with state fire marshal. What's really interesting is, is that you hear that the state fire, fire marshal says this, but then that same state fire marshal says, well, what of the building official says? So I'm, I'm trying to make sure to pull that together for the protection of all all of us, insurance rights and everything, we're covered with insurance. Um, but what the fair board's been working on, and I guess you could call this a liaison company, is, 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 okay, we're in compliance, but what does that mean if we have a fire? Yes, we have insurance, but how do we make sure that our public and our structure is protected the best we can? Is that a fire suppression system? Is that staying with the plan? Is it tearing out old wood bleachers and going with metal? So we're having those dis discussions, yeah. Commissioner. So it's it's a work in progress. We're in compliance. Um, I, I will say individually, I, I'm, I'm just in the middle on that compliance because of we have to take and train somebody and then you're, you're relying on volunteers to do all those duties, worst case scenario happens, there's a fire or whatever, um, you, yeah. get, you get crucified whenever it comes to that part of it. So um, we're, we're okay, we're okay, but look, we're looking at yeah. how do we take some of that exposure and limit it a little bit more. Yeah. The reason I asked because it was a promotion of $107,000 for new sprinkler system. Back in, took a little history, back in May of 2011, the subject came up of the dilapidated existing system and the fire marshal, deputy fire marshal, Greg Davis, met with and our building official, Tony West, and myself, and in looking through the uh, requirements that was not required. So that's when, uh, uh, being laid on with the uh, Fairbird, to the Fairbird, and they made the decision to remove the system. They, uh, they are the governing body. And then this past, but the system, the thing is, if you have a dilapidated system, you need to get rid of it. So it doesn't mislead responding firefighters thinking that there's a system there. Uh, but that fire marshal moved on, and then we got a new one, and he was out there and said something about you need to get either functioning or a new system. That's when I re-engaged with him and got him back in touch with the previous our, and with uh, Kim Moore, the building manager. And he said, oh, correct, you do, do not need one. But this, for $107,000 for a sprinkler system that's isn't needed, really kind of concerned me a little bit. We just put a lot of that $107,000 toward new, new bleachers or reducing the tender box underneath and so forth. Well, well that, that's how we're looking at. But um, the other side of it is, is if we did have a fire, $107,000 is pretty cheap for life. Uh, I'll stand short with that. Well, 
Well, I think the thing that's missed here is we adjourned on Friday. Is that didn't even get discussed. It got taken away. So there's no 107,000 anything. Yeah. But it wasn't the taken away. Wasn't explained why. Well, I thought, and I apologize. I got uh, sidetracked, but I thought I had done it. You gave me that budget meeting, uh, pretty good explanation that we're working on it. What you just said, $107,000, absolutely to go, go a long ways towards metal bleachers, and I appreciate that support because of, those are the things that we're looking at as the governing body of the fairgrounds. And, um, you know, that's what we're trying to weigh out, Commissioner, is, is what's the right thing. What triggered this was a fire out at the fairgrounds, and the suppression system saved the fairgrounds and probably life because during the fair, mm -hmm. there was a grease fire and the suppression system completely shut it down. Yeah. So then a fire marshal comes and he says, you need to get that other one up and going, this is the reason why. And it doesn't take the rocket science to figure out is we just saved the whole building and probably potentially life by a suppression system. So then you have to weigh out your liabilities and how good a suppression system works. And we've seen it work. Okay, so the derby's going on and there's 2,500 people in there have old wood structures and they get engulfed. We already know the history of people getting trampled during the Silver Lake fire way back when and I think there's all kinds of components so we're, we're taking a lot of things into consideration. Yes, we're in compliance. Is that where we want to be? Is that where we need to be as we're trying to look with, with the vision? But looking at uh, metal bleachers and lessening that Part and trying to come to the board of commissioners looking for money, trying to bring the other players in, what money they have. We're, we're working on it. Um, so um, I was very pleased that I, whenever I mentioned it during the presentation of the um, fair board, um, it just sort of morphed a little bit more than what I, I was just sort of making us aware and it, it morphed a little bit. Well, I morphed it and I. Kind of somewhat apologize for so, to say I've got ahead of myself. So that <clears throat> that's where we're at there. Um, any other updates or anything at this time? No. Nope. With that, we will recess until 3:30. Uh, really, uh, this is a very important as we have a lot of timing issues and everything. Uh, just to know the directions that we all need to be working, so it's a good work session. So we'll recess until 3.30.